you ever found yourself in southern Manitoba and thought, there must be more to shelter belt and windrow shrubs and lilacs and carraganas? I mean, sure, lilacs look great, smell great, uh, block wind and provide shelter, but have you ever tasted them? Well, leave something to be desired. Fortunately, there's alternatives with more actual food value that, unlike lilacs and carraganas, are actually native to Manitoba. Plants that are less purple, but more toothsome. First off, cranberries can be a really good alternative. They're kind of popular around here for this purpose, and in terms of size, density, and wind protection, they're quite comparable to a lilac. Probably the most familiar name on this list, though these are highbush cranberries, distinct from the cultivated cranberries, a different family. Those cultivated ones come from small plants that are grown in areas that are flooded for harvesting, these ones are a tall shrub growing up to four meters tall and often found wild in the forests here. In fact, the nearby Pembina Valley is actually named for the Ojibwe word for these plants. They produce fruits that can be used pretty much interchangeably with those other cranberries, apart from being a bit smaller and having larger seeds. You can use them in jams, jellies, juices, etc. You don't have to remove the seeds, but they will affect the texture of your dish a bit. These are also noteworthy in that once the fruit is ripe, some of them will stay on the bush well into the winter, leaving a nice kind of pop of red against the snow. And after the frost like that is actually when they sweeten up and have the best flavor. Like if you taste them now... Ugh. Yeah, no, that, that's not ripe. That's not ready for eating. It's, it's still half white, so <laughs> I shouldn't be surprised there, but yeah. <coughs> okay, Ugh. that's, uh, yeah, not in the edible stage yet. Pardon, yeah, it, it will taste good yet. <laughs> Partly because of this feature, obviously not many fruits are available fresh in the start Canadian winters, this was a hugely important food source for many indigenous groups, and a very highly prized one as well. If you want to know more about that, I do have an older video on winter foraging. Unfortunately my face is out of focus for that whole segment, but just ignore that part I guess. But it's a good shelter belt shrub, good for providing food for humans and for providing food for wildlife as well. But anyway, on to the next one. Next up, I'm probably doing a separate video on this one at some point, but I thought I should mention it here, the buffalo berry. Now there's two main types of these, silver buffalo berry and Canada buffalo berry. Silver buffalo berry, like this one here, has big thorns and pretty tasty berries. Canada buffalo berry, on the other hand, has no thorns, but berries that taste soapy, but can be used to make a traditional indigenous dessert of fruit flavored foam. I'd love to talk about those ones, but unfortunately I don't have any to show, so for this I'm just talking about silver buffalo berry. These are a nice looking shrub, about one to six meters tall, somewhat wide with sort of silvery green leaves. Towards autumn it looks especially nice when it starts exploding with these little red berries. They aren't the easiest berries to collect, being nestled amongst thorns as they are. If you don't like the idea of a bush trying to passive aggressively sword fight you as you pick its berries, the safer traditional way that a lot of the indigenous did is just to stretch a tarp or some other sort of sheet under here and shake the bush. They turn red early and sweeten up throughout the season, and so they're uh, sweetest after a frost. If you have them earlier on, kind of like a choke cherry, they'll have a sort of mouth drying astringency. Yeah, with a much brighter, tartar edge to it. It is, it's not bad if you're okay with that sort of, that sort of texture in your mouth. Yeah, I do like that, but they are best after the frost, though even then they're still generally better cooked than just eaten straight raw. Now, these are great for wildlife, but that's not actually where the name buffalo berry comes from. These weren't really eaten by the buffalo or bison much. The name comes more from, well, these were used quite extensively by a, a number of indigenous groups in their cooking, particularly for making sauces to put on bison meat. I'll go a bit more into why that is exactly in my other video, but just some additional ways these were used, just eaten straight, smoked and dried for winter, sometimes used in stews, very high in vitamin C, lycopene, other antioxidants as well. As a shelter belt tree or windbreak, this is great for growing in poor soils. It can handle sandy, salty, chalky, poor draining soils, and it can even fix nitrogen. It suckers from its roots as well, which makes for a very dense growth habit, which is great if you want to block out some wind or perhaps snoopy neighbors. And if you aren't wanting to put in the effort of harvesting this, 
don't worry, it won't go to waste. This is a great food for wildlife as well. Sharp-tailed grouse, if they can find it, they will make this one of their main foods. Deer like to browse and eat on the leaves. And because of its dense, thorny habit like this, this is a great shelter plant for a lot of birds and small mammals to hide under as well. So overall, this is, this is a really good plant. Next up, Saskatoons. Now, around here, pretty much everyone knows about Saskatoons. They're seldom used in shelter belts for some reason, but they're very popular at UPIX and farmers markets, eaten straight, put into pies, jams, and uh, I guess around here where you have a lot of Ukrainians and Mennonites, put into pierogies. And these are mainly a Canadian plant from Manitoba as far north and west as the Yukon. They are in some parts of the states as well, but for some reason they're less recognized as edible there, more often used ornamentally, and you get more people looking at you uncomfortably if you start to eat them off the bushes. I mean, you get that a lot just being into foraging. Or that's my perception anyway. If you're American and feel I'm mistaken, feel free to sue me in the comments or whatever. Uh, but true, these don't have the sort of eye-popping flavor that smacks you in the face with the sledgehammer of delight, not drastically sweet or sour, but they do have a nice, subtle, sweet flavor, closest to something, I would say, between a blueberry and a hawthorn. A bit softer than a blueberry, uh, but very similar in nutritional profile. Given its native range, it's obviously a very cold-hardy plant, great for feeding a lot of wildlife as well. Uh, as you can see, our other Saskatoons here are covered in a giant cage just because otherwise the birds get to them before you can get any of them. And very important in indigenous people's diets as well. This was another main fruit used in pemmican and a lot of other indigenous dishes, both in fresh or dried form. As far as shelter belts and windbreaks go, this has a pretty good density. It's uh, different from a lilac where you'd have a more wide bushy growth. This one's more vertical but it does put out a lot of suckers from its roots so you will get these dense stands that especially paired with a row of trees that'll make a pretty effective windbreak next nanny berry now this is a less familiar name unfortunately not that well known but it is a nice shrub in spring you get these profuse clusters of nice white blooms all over a nice fragrance and attracting a lot of different pollinators towards fall you can see the start of it already here because of our drought uh, the, the leaves all start to turn a nice red and similar to the cranberries, these are both viburnums, you get these fruit that stay on the bush into the winter time. These are one of the more mild flavored berries admittedly and on some bushes they can be a little bit bland but they typically have a nice flavor somewhere between a raisin and a date. Uh, with a texture, a soft chewy texture, I would put it kind of close to tamarind in that respect. Yeah, that uh, texture plus the blackish color earned it its local low German name of Teabern or uh, Tarberry. Not the most appetizing name so let's just stick with Nanny Berry. You can eat them ripe or dried but if you want them ripe you'll have to be quick about picking them because they pretty quickly turn into raisins on the bush. I just like to snack on these but they apparently do make good jams, jellies, the usual. Uh, yeah that's a good little snack. Definitely uh, definitely gets your hands a little messy, depending how you eat them. Yeah, that's a good flavor, a good little nibble. Uh, they do have a big flat seed like the cranberries, so you can eat it, but uh, even more so than the cranberry, it's, uh, it's a bit hard, a bit hard and papery. So if you can, I would strain them out if you're processing them for something bigger. But even if you don't plan to harvest the fruit, this is a good plant to, to plant just for uh, providing food for wildlife. Birds and mammals alike eat the berries well into the winter time. Some animals eat the leaves here. And it is native from this area, kind of from Manitoba down into the northeastern United States as well. But that's all I have for this week. Of course, if you have any good recipes for any of these fruits or just want to talk about your favorite shrub, feel free to comment down below. And liking and subscribing, of course, always helps me out. This video was brought to you by the Stanley Soil Management Association. The SSMA is a non-for-profit organization that offers various ecological goods and services throughout the Pemina Valley Watershed District and beyond. In addition to providing tree sales to landowners, they've planted well over 600 miles of shelter belts since 1987, or somewhere over 700,000 trees. So for more tasty, worrisome, or at the very least, interesting plants, join me next time on Ambling with Sam.
eaten. They were eaten straight, used in sauces, puddings. Puddings? Was there puddings? Yes, puddings. No, puddings. Puddings. Um, 